it's 2022, and assuming nothing goes horribly wrong, the Elizabeth line is opening this year, probably quite soon in fact by the time this video goes out. It will provide a new rail link from east to west across London. All very exciting. But east to west rail links are nothing new, and in fact the last one only stopped operating in 2002. This is the story of the short-lived service from Norwich to Basingstoke, known as London Crosslink. Crosslink was begun as an experiment by Anglia Railways using funding provided by the Strategic Rail Authority. The Strategic Rail Authority was set up in 1999 with the aim of providing Britain with a better rail service. In 1994, British Rail had been dissolved and divided up under privatisation. Now, the nation's railways were in the hands of many different franchises. The SRA was basically there to keep them all in line, so to speak. It didn't always work. One of the big issues was that the organisation was fairly toothless and its jurisdiction clashed with the rail regulator. When it came into conflict with other authorities and organisations, it didn't have the legal power to overrule them. So, really, it was of rather limited use. The privatisation of British Rail was, in general, a mess, and really we could be here all day complaining about the many things wrong with the way they did it. But instead, let's talk about Crosslink. You know, the thing in the title. The route ran from Norwich to Stratford. At Stratford, it moved on to the North London line as far as South Acton. At South Acton, it switched on to the Hounslow Loop, then headed down to Staines on the Waterloo to Reading line. From there, it would head on to the southwest main line all the way to Basingstoke. I'll be honest, this sounds like a pretty useful route to me. A train that could take me from Basingstoke to Islington, from Ipswich to Camden, sounds pretty good to me. Unfortunately, the big problem with the route was that, frankly, it was set up in a rather half-hearted manner. The way I've described it makes it sound very useful, but in practice, it wasn't. The service varied drastically. It would miss out different stations on different days and at different times. Not every train went all the way. The timetable changed. Then there was the question of frequency. Six trains per day. The departures from Basingstoke on a weekday were 8.27, 10.30, 12.32, 13.42, 16.33 and 18.06. That's not very regular nor is it very frequent. To compare it with another cross-London service, I know that if I miss my train on Thameslink, there is always the same amount of time until the next one. Often the service is so frequent that it doesn't really matter. The timing of the cross-link service also seems bizarre. The earliest train wouldn't get you into London until well after 9, so you're missing out on rush hour traffic. Crosslink also had a structural disadvantage. It had to use diesel trains because part of the route wasn't electrified. And when I say part of the route wasn't electrified, I'm talking about the stretch of track from South Acton to Brentford. For the sake of that very short distance, electric trains could not be used. I've not heard this argument made for its failure, but I'm going to say that unlike Crossrail or Thameslink, the route doesn't actually run into central London. It skirts around it. Those other routes run directly through the city. Now, of course, you could argue that both Thameslink and Crossrail also required far more investment and infrastructure work than Crosslink, which was just a train service running over existing routes. But I am going to say that a big attraction of having a train service through London is that you have a train service running through central London. Nevertheless, the experiment was judged a failure, and on the 28th of September 2002, after just over two years, the service was brought to an end. In some ways, I think it's a shame. It had the potential, I think, to be a useful route. And I believe it could have been a lot more popular with a few minor tweaks. Better timing and consistent stops would make it much more attractive to commuters and leisure travellers alike. Electrification of the unelectrified track could have opened up possibilities not only for this service, but for others. Still, it was not to be, and they never built an east-to-west cross-London link ever again. The end.
Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please do click the like button and perhaps subscribe for more. I'd be interested to hear your opinions on Crosslink. Do you think it could have been a useful service, or was it always going to be a failure? How would you have changed it to make it better? And I'm going to ask you another question. Can you think of any other routes using existing railways in London that would be handy? Let me know in the comments section. I'd like, as I always do, to thank my generous supporters on Ko-fi and Patreon. You are the electrification to my branch line. And I'll see you all again very soon. Cheerio.